Welcome to the Web3 Center Hour, where we are mastering the art of NFTs. Twice a week, myself and Madame Love, we host these shows live on Twitter, where we have a different special guest on speaking about a skill set within the Web3 industry. If this is your first time, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you like our channel and you like the stuff that we put out, hit that subscribe, hit that like button, and tune in for all the juicy content. Okay, welcome everyone. This is uh, the Web3 Center Hour. We're on to episode 18 today. Um, and we're mixing it up a little bit. We've, uh, we normally just have the one special guest on, but we came up with this little idea during the week. We wanted to have two people on today because they're both unique artists and, and one actually is creating artwork and physical artwork and bringing it into the NFT scene. And the other one is actually taking NFTs and turning it into physical art. So a bit of a, a, a 1v1 versus two really talented artists. Um, but before we get started, uh, how are you today, Madame Love? I'm good. It's not often we get two art episodes back to back. I, don't, I feel like Christmas. You must, you know, <laughs> for people that I haven't, people regulars aren't, uh, I'm not the artist myself, but Madame Love is. So this is an all art based episode. Uh, so it's going to be good. I'm going to be a bit out of my element here, um, but I'm looking forward to it. So I'll, uh, I'll introduce the two. The two speakers we've got today, we've got My Tiny Castles, um, and if you don't mind, it's Leah. I think everyone knows your name by now, and, and we have Morgana. So um, how are you guys today, My Tiny? How are you? I'm doing well. It's kind of confusing to be looking at the Zoom and talking on my phone, so I almost forgot to unmute, but it's good to be here today. Thanks for having me. And Morgana? Yeah, likewise. I've just moved to the Gold Coast, so I'm, you know, enjoying the sun. I didn't know that. So I live in the Gold Coast. So I, 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 we're going to have to catch up. I live in, whereabouts in the Gold Coast are you? I'm in Corumban. Oh, okay. Well, I'm up in Southport. So we're about 15, oh, no, about 25 minutes away. So yeah, there you go. More and more people are coming to the Gold Coast. So that's a bit of a crew down this way now. So it's good to have you both. But um, yeah, I don't know how this is going to run because normally we just direct the questions both at the one guest. So this is going to be a bit tricky on my on my morning brain right now in Australia. It's still quite, still quite early. So We'll see how we go. What we'll do is we um, we normally ask who your like sensei is in 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 life. So maybe what we'll do is we'll start off. We'll keep the show in order for now, and then till we and then we'll just open it up a little bit. So we'll start with you, Tiny. We're looking for someone who um, who's inspired you in your life. It doesn't have to be Web three. It can just be inspired in real life. You know, I think there are a lot of different like artists and choreographers and things like that in the real world that inspire me creatively. But since we are doing web three, I'll give a shout out to a friend of mine. Their account is ultra common. They're not super um, around in spaces, but they are my crypto sensei through and through. They're the one that taught me how to set up a wallet. Um, they're the one that I call when I'm struggling with my smart contract now. So um, I wanted to give them that little shout for being my, my crypto sensei. That's, that's awesome. I, I like, like for anyone coming into the industry as well, having a, a sensei or a mentor in the crypto side of things and helping you set up all these important aspects is very important because you can, you can quickly get lost and make many, many easy mistakes. So it's always a good one to have someone who can support you in industry, which is so heavily around those, uh, those procedures. And for myself, I know I learned firsthand by YouTube videos and other ways. And I made many, many mistakes and lost decent amounts of money to begin with because I had no idea what I was doing. So I think it's a very important one. And then and Morgana? Well, I'm a big, I'm a really big fan of the Australian projects. Like I really love um, Dead Fellas. I really love Not Your Bro. So I just, I'm a graphic designer by trade. So I really respect when I see brand executed on a very high level um so yeah i just like australian projects in general i should also say new zealand projects in general because i am a kiwi posing as an australian um but i do yeah i do love it all yeah amazing um was i gonna say I, that's kind of leads into what I was wondering about because I know like Tiny, you've got an interesting journey kind of coming into this space as well, especially like tied in with your beautiful project. Love what Tiny does. 
um, with all your, like, your little pieces and your uh, collections of craft materials and putting it all together and letting that inner child out. And Morgana, I've been so interested in hearing like your background story as well, because obviously you're also a very talented artist um, with a lot of skill. And so I think we'll follow in. I, it's just easier if we get you, Leah, Tiny, to answer questions first and then follow through. So please explain a little bit about, like, your art and your business background. Yeah, so um, I actually am an art school dropout. I started college as an art major. I ended up changing to history, and I have worked in um, government consulting for the last 10 years. I... Um, really didn't do a lot of art for a long time. I've always thought of myself as crafty, but after I dropped out of art school, I really like wasn't making a whole lot. And my dad, um, he's a cigar smoker and he was collecting all his boxes for me and was kind of like, if you're an artist, do something with these. Um, so I started collecting all sorts of bits and pieces, odds and ends, and I used them to make dioramas inside cigar boxes or other small, um, you know, small little boxes or tins and I photograph those to create my NFTs so that's a little background on me what I just want to jump in there and so what was it that made you like because while, while we've got you on you're both doing two different things that's completely unique um and I wanted to know like why what is it that you thought okay well I'm going to put these up as an NFT like it was the was there any reasoning you're like, okay, well, there's an opportunity here. Or is it just because you love the technology and you're like, okay, well, I like training up. Why not put it on there for everyone else to see? Yeah. Um, you know, before NFTs, I really like, I didn't have a way to share my art. I wasn't trying to sell these little pieces on Etsy. You know, they, so much goes into them. The amount of money I would want to sell one like that just wasn't a way of getting my art out there in the beginning. Um, and I just saw this great opportunity where, well, you know, if I can't share the actual piece, I can share images of the piece. And um, it's really grown from there. Now I'm working on a generative collection. So I really love the web three, the web three of it all. You know, I want to be more, more in with the technology. I, I just want my fingers in all the pots. So <laughs> That's really, really cool. I, That's all. Okay. No, I was, I was going to say, I know that Morgana is very, uh, very tech savvy as well. You're probably more tech savvy than all three of us here right now. So um, I'm, I'm assuming that's why you're in the industry as well. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, it's a natural transition for me. So like I obviously have a tech background, um, and a design background, and I also studied economics. So it's kind of NFTs, kind of is all of those things making sense at once. Um, when I look at the markets at the moment, my brain is just like, oh yeah, this is like a peak in a pit cycle. Like it makes total sense. So adding my design on top of that, I'm just like servicing all the areas of me that absolutely fuel me in a way. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think for Oh, sorry, I just cut you off again. But you go, ladies first. There's too many ladies in here. I'm getting overwhelmed. Uh, I'll let you guys jump in. Back to you, Madame Love. <laughs> I was just going to say, Morgana, like um, when you kind of first came into the space, were you doing like what What way did you like express your art? Did you, were you, because obviously doing a lot of digital and design and things, you probably got a little bit of a back catalogue. Um, so did you start by listing this sort of stuff? No, I've, I've not like, I've not listed anything or I just, I'm a big fan of process. And I think if you can show your process, you can build not only following, but like you can build buy-in from people around what you're doing and you can make them care about it. Like you can be the best singer in the world, but if you don't have a backstory, your brand's not going to sell. So my brain inherently thinks about process because it's the key to unlocking the that kind of emotional rapport with others. Mm. So I'm in in a sense I'm in the process building phase at the moment. <laughs> Beautiful. I I can um, 
I need to pick your brain a little bit more, I think, because I'm so spontaneous. So I just jump straight in and it's, yeah, I shoot myself in the foot. Sorry, Steph, I cut you off before. Please go. No, I was just going to say, because we've got both of you up here, feel free to jump in, either of you, whenever you want. I know you both speak very well in all your spaces that you guys hold because I've been in other spaces with you. So don't uh, worry about us just asking the questions. Feel free just to jump in, cut me off whenever you want. I won't be offended. I do it all the time, unfortunately. So I, I need a bit of karma back to myself. So feel free to jump in. I just wanted to say that out there too. The, like this to me is a really interesting. People that can't see, we do film these on Zoom. Um, and I've got three lovely ladies looking at me and I'm, I, I've, I've been um, outnumbered today. Uh, so it's, it's, it's running and I'm enjoying it. It's good. But yeah, so what I wanted to, I wanted to speak more like, I guess your reasonings, but like, obviously you mentioned why you wanted to put that because you didn't get exposure. Um, but obviously Morgana, from what I've heard you're doing and what I've seen, you're actually now recreating some of these NFTs into artwork. Is that, is that correct? Yep. And, um, and that's a very interesting process as well. So what I wanted to touch on is obviously you, you girls both see the opportunity within NFTs and Web3. And I want to just discuss that from an artist's perspective, from both of you, how you're seeing it as artists. Um, either of you can start. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead. Oh. Okay, cool. You go, you go. <laughs> um, I, I think Web3 is like magic for artists. I think like it really is, there's, you have access to so many other artists. Everybody is like talking and sharing. There's so much art being made. Um, and like, it's a really supportive community. So I feel like maybe I lost the question in there a little bit, but I just think like being an artist in Web3 is great. Um, it's been great for my art too, so. Do you find that you're getting more inspired by being around so many artists? Oh, a hundred percent. And I get inspired that like, I want to put more work out there. Like, I feel like I get mm. the response from people um, that makes me feel like I want to keep showing, you know, like people care what I'm putting out there. They're interested to see more and it makes me want to make more. Yeah, absolutely. But just to clarify also, like I've also heard you speak about the other side of the spectrum about how, you know, you, your primary reason for creating this for yourself and for the healing and for the, you know, the, you know, pure joy out of it as well. So I, I love hearing um, yeah, both sides of that from you. Yeah. What was the question again? Just to refresh my brain. <laughs> I was more direct. I was more, I was more direct to get towards like um, what the opportunity for artists right now, because obviously there's so much, like there's so many different ways you could be entering the NFT and, and how you're seeing it. Like obviously for a while there, uh, there was a, like a big PFP run but that, and that's not going to be an ongoing, in my opinion, that is a dead thing. It will continue to happen. There might be another run later on, but it's not something that I think will be as big as it was in your, you're looking at your Januaries and your Februaries. Um, so I'm more thinking like what sort of, what, what sort of thing is an artist opportunity to start coming in now? Like obviously uh, Tiny's doing something very unique and very specific, it's very niche. Um, and, and you're doing something a little bit niche as well. So I was just more in, in conversation about how you're seeing the opportunities for artists right now and what, what the potentials are. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you on the profile picture stuff. Like, I, I don't think it's necessarily dead, but it's going to be a lot harder. Um, the market is so saturated, and I think it's going to really – the people who are going to succeed are the people who understand how to execute on brand because I think it's not enough just to come up with something cool now. You really have to have a, a really good brand strategy. And that's just like observing it from my perspective, having worked in the design industry. You can kind of see what's going to work and what's not going to work. And um, me meeting with a few founders, like I can see threads of people not understanding how important brand is to establish if you're going to go after that profile picture market. For for artists in general, I see us becoming more of the, not so much focal point, but um, our skills actually being respected and honoured. Um, I think with the profile picture run, there was a big capitalization on artists and artists not realising their value. And it really, like, I don't know if we can swear on this, and I apologise in advance, I swear a lot. Um, 
it really fucks me off when I see artists being taken advantage of. And I saw that in quite a few profile picture collections, like these people who had operated in the business domain coming across, hiring these artists for dirt, and then not pay- not paying them royalties and then getting, you know, these commissions on commissions. Um, so I think we're moving into a phase now where the artist stands up and is honoured and respected and paid in perpetuity for the thing that they... Because when you're creating art, you're extracting the pieces of yourself that are so deep that should be valued and honoured and paid. And um, I think we're going to see a surge of artists really really getting what they deserve and on t- on touching on that, that subject as well about like um not being paid like i know in recent times there has been projects that have actually used artists as a header and use them as like oh they are we have got their artwork and i know uh, a guy that we had on the show nft nate he's actually he, he was actually talking to me behind the scenes about it and, and he found out deeper that this project the artist didn't have anything to do with this project they had basically brought the art off the artist and I'm assuming they brought it for a pretty reasonable price because the artist wasn't interested in NFTs or didn't understand what Web3 was. And then they were putting out a 5, 10K project with their artwork and then kind of basing it around the theory that he was he was behind it. Um, so for the people outside looking in, it looks like a really good project to be part of because you really like the artist, you like what they're doing. But if you dive a bit deeper, these guys are basically just ripping someone's art uh, even though they're, I mean, they're not ripping because they're paying them money, but they're paying them small amounts um, and not really telling them the bigger picture. So I'm, I'm glad that you touched on that. Um, and I think, yeah, I think artists are are starting to get rewarded for their hard work. It's, it's going to take time, like anything. It's going to take time. Um, but it's amazing to see people all over the world, in my opinion, people that maybe aren't financially as uh, as lucky as some of us, and they are getting rewarded for the the same art that they're creating over in their country that we might create over in, in Australia, um, they're getting paid the same amount of money as what we are, which for them goes a very long way. Um, and they wouldn't be able to do that. They wouldn't be able to get this artwork out to every, to the masses to a degree. Or we're not, we wouldn't say we're masses yet, but to a larger number of people um, because of their location and their financial. So for me, the, the artistic opportunity is huge in that sense. Um, and then I think once that, levels up to getting paid what everyone's worth and how long it takes like i'll touch back on you tiny like how long does it take for you to create one of your your pieces i mean it it could take anywhere from like one week to i mean there are some projects i've worked on for like a year because sometimes you do some things and then you don't like how it looks and you put it away and maybe three months later you got some new materials and you play with it again and you know, maybe you spend like eight hours moving things around, but you never glue anything in. And so it looks like you did nothing, but you know, that's all time that goes into counting. So um, being able to see, and this is something that's really interesting about um, this web three space to me is like, when you talk about generative projects um, or like AI art, these are things that like traditionally artists kind of like, shrug their shoulders at like well that's not real art but I think like in this world it is art and finding a way to make that stand out as art is really important because PFP projects like that that's not going to go away artists want to be able to sell 2,000 pieces at once we want to be able to reach wide audiences and a big part of web3 is building that community so we it it's it's integral really to have those big projects but I think what we're going to look out for is a lot more creativity in what what you're generating. Are you generating a monkey face or are you, you know, like my project is going to be little rooms where the traits are furniture. So it's like, I think you'll see a lot more innovation, but those core art styles, I think are just going to keep expanding and growing because that tech piece matters, you know? And if I've, I learned that lesson hard because I make physical art and taking a picture of physical art doesn't make an NFT. You know, you have to think about how it's going to look in the, if somebody wants to put it on their Twitter, like, is it just the corner of somebody? Like, what is showing? So there's more that goes into into making an NFT, even from like a painting or something physical. But, yeah. And rant. <laughs> no, 
I, I didn't, for me, like, I don't know. I've actually something that I should know, but um, I know my mum who's, uh, she's always listening in. She's a big follower. Thank you, Sal. How, how are you there down there, Sal Master? Um, but she's, she's like, uh, she used to do a lot of art when she was younger and now I've got her back into it. So she's using Procreate and she's, she's basically really enjoying it. Um, but she was asking me the other day, like, oh, if I create something that's not digital, like, how do I make it into an NFT? Like, do I just take a picture? And I was like, well, I'm assuming so. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'd like, like to, for me and for anyone that's not artistic based, maybe you could touch a little bit about that, Tony, before we, we ask for the next question, because I'm actually interested to know, and I'm sure other people might be as well. Yeah, so I use Procreate. Um, I do, I, I went through a lot of phases. Like at first I thought I was just going to, use the Prisma app, which like puts all sorts of filters on your art and makes it look like all different effects. And um, you know, what it really has come down to now is optimizing the materials. So I make things in squares more often than rectangles now because squares look better in a, <laughs> on Twitter and that's where people want their NFTs. Um, so it, it's changed the art that I make. I, some of my pieces are super detailed and there's like a million tiny things, but like the better NFTs are maybe three big items that just are really striking. So, you know, you, you still have to be an artist. You can't just take a picture of a stagnant piece in the world and, and it will magically be art. You still, it's in the pic, the way you take the picture and do you edit? How do you edit? What kind of shadow are you having in your picture? I mean, it's, you know, it's, yes, it is just taking a picture, but it's so much more than taking a picture. Cool. I'm, I'm wondering, um, like, where does your inspiration come from, the both of you? And also just a little thought about uh, the, the AI art. You know, I was reflecting on this last night, and I think, um, like yes, you've got you've got the generated like the computer the, the digital side of it, but what really brings it together is, is what I'm seeing these people doing with storytelling and you know bringing their soul, which is like you know the physical part, especially in in line with what we're talking today with the digital and the physical. Like they they build worlds, they build these long winded stories with characters, and that's what kind of you know, brings it all together and and me knowing how much time and effort I put into a piece, um, hand drawing and, and putting it together, it, it, it kind of, yeah, it's helped me to see it as proper art as well. But, yeah, what inspires both of you ladies? Please tell me. Oh, my God. Um, how much time do I have? <laughs> um, okay. So I'm inspired by, like, art history. I am a big art history nerd. So... When I see the NFT space, like I'm always thinking about, there's this art movement. Um, it's probably in the after the 1920s. It was called Dadism. And basically the, the art movement was about um, trash being art. So like this artist called Marcel Duchamp put a urinal in an art gallery and called it art. And I think that kind of boundary pushing is so evident in nfts and the opportunity for the boundary pushing of what makes art art is yeah there's a real opportunity there so like i find that whole historical context of art very inspiring for us developing this next medium um because i see nfts as more of a medium for art rather than like the art itself if that makes sense so yeah i'm just inspired by where we're taking this collectively um, is the NFT space. So. And I, I take a lot of my inspiration just from being in the space, honestly, like talking to people. It's You never know what somebody is going to connect to in your work. And that, I think, really like lights me up if somebody's like, oh, look at this piece. And I'm like, well, I didn't really, you know, I, I didn't love that corner, but now I do, <laughs> or, you know, something you... You really get to see what other people enjoy, I guess. You kind of see through their eyes a little bit. I want to I want to touch on, um, uh, we mentioned Twitter before, so obviously we're on Twitter spaces right now, but uh, 
how are you seeing it going forward for you, for your artwork? But do you put a lot of your artwork on other platforms? Like I'm someone who is has very very been anti platform for uh, for many years up until the last probably six months. I've I've realized how silly I was, and that if I want to grow any of my businesses in any way, that I need to be quite active on social media. So I've been I and, and I got into Twitter because of NFTs, and I wanted to learn so much. But um, I'm hearing a lot of noise these days around the fact. Uh, like what Instagram is doing and what TikTok, uh, TikTok, TikTok's doing, um, and I'm very now much getting deeply involved in those uh, areas. Now, are you guys seeing that from an artist perspective as a platform that you should be looking into? Because I think the Instagram, for a reason, is going to be a huge audience that's going to come over into Web three, but they're not going to be wanting to jump over to Twitter. Like I, the early people have come to Twitter because that's where the masses were, and we're like, okay, we need to learn as much, so we're going to learn from here. But I speak to my mates every day and I tell them I'm on Twitter and they're like, why are you on Twitter? Like it's, it's for, the, for, the, for the normies out there that it's a bit odd. And I think artwork needs to be more towards those other platforms. I don't know. How, how are you girls seeing that? Like Tiny, uh, Morgana, Tiny, do you want to go? Um, yeah. So I, you know, Instagram has a lot of rules about like you're not allowed to advertise NFTs or something like that. So I do have my Instagram set up. I'm not like super active. This month, I'm doing a TikTok challenge um, through a woman named Lauren Turton. I don't know if you're familiar with her account, but she's uh, great in Web3. And it's like posting three to 10 TikToks a day. And she gives you all her tips and the mm. tracker. And um, I like I have a love hate relationship with it because I've seen TikTok sell out people's collections, but I like hate being on it. But the NFT TikTok community is amazing and that's who I hung out with at NFT NYC so it's there and they're doing really well because of it so I think it's like worth getting well, we had Lisa we had Lisa on the other day didn't we that you uh that you're a, you're a fan of so Lisa's a big Australian uh I didn't realize how big she was in TikTok until you came up and spoke about it so yeah for, for me I, I'm seeing opportunities uh for like the biggest thing is how do we bring web two people into web three and i'm just seeing other platformers being as being the the bridge not so much twitter in my opinion even though twitter has been so beneficial to my um learning so far but i don't know Morgana, how, do you, how, how are you seeing it yeah i think um instagram for me has always been like a point of call for my audience i i wouldn't say audience but like um, for all my design work and um, my paintings and stuff, the process side works really well on Instagram. And out of that, I've been able to do some pretty big projects. So I, for me, like it's, it's all about where you've established real estate in terms of your audience. So, you know, for me, it's going to be like switching some of my Web2 audience from Instagram over to Web3 and seeing if it will convert. Um, also seeing um, like TikTok I'm not really on, but I just choose to focus my energy where I've already established audience. But that might be different for someone who's, say, starting from scratch. And then you've got to really decide, where do you want to put your energy? Like, I don't really want to put my energy into TikTok. I can get the same results out of Instagram. You've just got to make a choice because you can't do it, everything unless you're, you've got an assistant or three assistants maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to um, almost a little bit selfishly. So can you kind of elaborate on what sort of processes you share on Instagram and things like that, Morgana? Um, yeah, for sure. So like I come from the video world as well. Um, so I know how to put together a three act story really easily. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, how are we starting the process? We're getting the paint brushes out of my paint tin. We put, we're pouring the paint and then the, the guts of the act is act two. We're, we're sketching out and lining the painting, applying the paint. And then act three is the finishing and the details on the finishing and the sending of the picture. So I'm really thinking about any reel I put up on Instagram as that three act narrative from start to end, really snappy, really um there's that saying you know i don't i don't know who said it but it's so true the kill your darlings thing like you have to kill so kill your darlings basically means like um you have to trim the fat of everything on that story 
that doesn't make sense and progress the narrative. So you become very, very strict with your editing. So I only put together like max one minute of that three act narrative, but it could take me like two hours to edit that one reel. But the feedback and the process sharing I get from that is so much more. So it's like, it's worth it. But it's like, it's really nerdy process, but it's very like following the Hitchcock narrative of three acts. Yeah. That's a great tip. Isn't it? No, yeah, I, 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 love, I like that one. If you're not someone who's not an artist, I, I definitely try to use that in different ways. Um, and Madame, I'm sure you're going to you'll carry on and you'll probably use it as well. I'll pass back over to you. Yeah, 100% because like, you know, as, as someone that's new to process videos at the moment, my technique is to film everything and then just speed it up to get it into that one minute where, you know, you, and I do think back and also just, you know, clipping more out and slowing down some of the really high detail parts to really like encapsulate and have the, the levels of depth and enthrallment. And I haven't thought about it as, you know, naturally you kind of go through that progression of act one to act three. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. But it's curious seeing, hearing you kind of flesh it out. Did you want to say something? I'm looking at your face. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just thinking, like, um, if anyone wants to be inspired by that three-act na narrative and, like, how shots work really, really well. So one of my favourite filmmakers is Wes Anderson. Um, and, like, obviously previous to that, it's, like, the Stanley Kubricks, et cetera. But if you watch a Wes Anderson film like Grand Budapest Hotel, all of the shots are set up so methodically. And I think if you can take inspiration from the way Wes Anderson shoots, you can execute on, it doesn't matter if you're making real estate videos to sell property. If you can capitalize on the way Wes, Wes Anderson shoots, you can really develop style and understand how to cut a narrative really effectively. Um, but I, I would implore anybody to go and watch at least one Wes Anderson film and, and look at it clinically in the way he shoots, the angles he picks, the symmetry he looks at, the asymmetry he looks at. It's fantastic. And even like colours from then on. But like I literally have a file of the Grand Budapest Hotel on my laptop and whenever I get, I need inspiration for like process videos, I will pick a random part and start watching and it really helps me to understand what I'm doing how curious uh, I think that's yeah really super interesting and a little fun fact um, I think yeah I, I love how we've kind of fleshed that out but I think we'll move on to our next question you know it's you tried to say that we had lots of people in the space, Steph, before, but no, we don't. It's, it's so small, but still there's so many artists and there's so many of us out there. And, yes, like I do see a lot of the same kind of styles and I don't know if that's because we're hanging out with each other. There's so much art that's getting put out constantly that we're getting, um, you know, obviously we're, we're filters as people and we take in everything and it's, sometimes it's hard to maintain our own voice and our own style. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, like, how important is it, do you think, to be unique as an artist? And then, you know, a follow-up question, like, how do you stand out here? Oh, I can I – I'm just going to jump in because this question always – doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, I think the question is less about being unique and more about being truthful to who you are. Like it doesn't, like you could be, I don't know, you could be a nurse in a hospital, but it's all about like how you carry yourself. There's this exacerbation and this amplification when you are creating art. People can see straight through it if you are not uniquely being who you are. And that's why things don't work because people don't understand that they're not being truthful to their art. So I think the question is more about like developing who you are and ignoring all the noise of what everybody else is doing. Because once you can refine that, that's your unique selling point. That's your point of difference in the space. But I think a lot of people jump on the trends, much like, you know, it's like the difference between, I don't know, making your own clothes and then going to Target like there's nothing wrong with that but like do you know what I mean like 
you're developing your own style, you're understanding who you are, etc. Yeah, that's kind of my take on that. Do you have a no, so tiny, I'll come back. I think it, you know, you have to be an artist. And if, if you really are kind of like you said, you're like true to your unique voice, you can't. It's when you start ignoring your own voice that like you, you make boring work. And I think part of it in this space is that everybody wants to learn. So it's like, oh, well, I've always used pen and paper. Now I want to learn um, Procreate. And I guess I should learn Blender. And then, you know, you do the the little course that teaches you how to make a teddy bear in Blender. And then there's 500 different teddy bear projects because it's the one thing everyone learned how to make in Blender. So I think, you know, make your own art and and people will remember remember you for it. But it's, it's it's very very nice, and I, I believe that in in just general, like I, I I it doesn't even have to be for artists out there. If you're if you're being yourself and putting yourself out there, it's either going to go both one one or two ways. Like people are either going to love you and, and and enjoy everything, or they might not relate to you. But that's just it. Someone will relate to you. Everyone relates to different people, um, and you just need to find your sort of crowd that you that you fit into that 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 is really interested. No, I think I think what's the what's the quote like? Some like oh I forgot it's completely slipped me but someone out there it's to do with someone out there will will relate to you you just need to find those people and if you start trying to act like someone else and try to be someone else that's all well and good you might create a crowd of people but once you start once they start seeing cracks in your persona and and see a different person you will quickly lose everyone and all that time wasted to create this so called audience uh, is going to evaporate and you're back to square one again so you need to start and be true to yourself and. And putting out the stuff that you that you want to do because otherwise it would just um it, to me it's a waste of time. Um, but yeah, that's a bit, a bit a bit of a rant there for myself. I, I, that's all I can throw in on the arts on the art topics right now. So, <laughs> but I, I, I wanted to I wanted to move back to you, Morgana, quickly because we did touch a lot on how um, how Tiny's creating her her artwork in her physical pieces and how it takes a lot of time and. and now she's then uh, taking photos and putting them on Procreate and then editing them. So it's a, it's a big process. But we didn't touch too much about what you're doing and actually doing the opposite. You're actually taking NFTs um, and then turning them into physical pieces. Now, I, I'm interested to know a little bit more. Is this something you would, you started off as like a, a hobby or is it something you're like, okay, well, I can, I can see a, um, a, a potential uh, interest here. And, and the fact, is there, do you, is there other people doing this? And is this something that, or I think it's going to be something that's going to become quite big because people are going to get attached to their NFTs and they're going to want to have them like made into huge portraits or made into sculptures. So I think there's opportunity for it. Um, and I just want to know a little bit more. Yeah. So I, at the start of this year, I had surgery for endometriosis. It's like a disease I deal with. And um, while I was resting up, I wanted to keep myself sane. So I started painting my NFT collection and my brain being very like design and brand focused, I was like, I'm going to document this process because it's fun. People don't really see me paint that often. Like I, I paint when I want to come off the digital tools, like it's my release almost of being too much on a computer screen. Um, and then I just, yeah, I started sharing the process and immediately DMs of, can you do mine? Can you paint mine? And I was like, sure, why not? Like, let's do it. Um and that's just kind of escalated to the point now where I'm like trying to find a studio in the Gold Coast. Like it's, it's an amazing cheat code I found to life. Like I just, I'm genuinely so grateful to have found it because it's just, it's my release now has become not so much my every day, but like a really, really fun side project that I get paid for. So like, yeah. And I, and I think, I think like, obviously, it's a, that's a bit of a hack that you found in. And I'm sure you won't be upset if other people start doing this as well, because there's going to be so many NFTs in the world. And, and, and for me, like, I can see you've got some big money being thrown on NFTs. Um, and they're like, oh, but at the moment, they can only display it to their friends on, like, their laptop or their computer or their phone or their watch. Um, you imagine some of these uh, more, like, I guess, higher up, richer people, they want to flex, and that's what the NFT scene is all about. A little bit is to be some of it for some people. It's a bit of a flex. So 
if they've got a big like life size portrait of the their whatever hundred thousand dollar ape or whatever, look, I'd always go back to apes because they're the like the most expensive one. That's that's like to them to pay you whatever money it is. That's nothing to them. It's pocket change for you to do artwork. So for artists that may be listening into this, it is a uh, there is obviously I like to talk about blue oceans. There's obviously op- opportunity to be doing something like this and. You can only if you're painting it, that takes time. So you can only do so many at a time until you have to obviously create maybe a team below you. I don't, I'm not sure what you have planned in the future, um, but that's probably what I'd be doing <laughs> from a business side. Of yeah, things. <laughs> yeah. Look, there's like yeah, so. you can't you can't like there's only so much scale you can produce out of yourself, right? So you have to like refine your process. Like now when I'm because I spray paint a lot to begin with, so I I will line up like four canvases do all my backgrounds at once with spray, spray paint, throw the paint at the canvas because I like develop my backgrounds first. So I'm doing that all in like one batch process rather than like meticulously doing each single one. <laughs> but I can still get that uniqueness and my style out of like batch producing it, um, which is kind of fun. And it's kind of like what Andy Warhol did, right? Or like Damien Hirst has done or Jeff Koons has done like Jeff Koons has a factory where he produces all of his balloon animals and Damien Hirst has like bunches of canvases lining the wall where he throws his dot paintings at like it's it's a process that's worked why you know like why not we don't need to reinvent the wheel yeah I, I would like to I want to ask you both this question because now that we've like kind of dealt uh, dealt dealt uh, tongue-tied now that we've gone into your work Morgana and we've heard about Pine Eve, and like I said at the start of the show both very unique uh, types of art or doing different doing different things I wanted to ask you about how how's it going speaking to like society like friends outside of web3 because obviously when they ask oh you're an artist oh that's cool what do you oh I make art I make physical artwork into nfts or oh, I actually make art of nfts uh how's that going how's like how's how are you getting how's the response going uh from the, the community around you or uh, how, how's, how's that seen in my opinion? Do you want to, okay, okay, I'll go first. Um, it's been, uh, it's been different. I've got quite a few friends into it, um, which has been great. Um, most of my friends are in the business domain, startup domain. So they kind of get, they get the blockchain applications and like the further use case of NFT. So that's been kind of good. When I'm talking to my friends who are maybe like, um, maybe like doctors or nurses or whatever, um, they are a little bit like, why would you do that? Why would you just go and like buy stocks in Telstra? And I'm like, ah. So um, there's been a bit of that, but I've just kind of like, I just, it's kind of like politics, religion, sex. You just don't bring it up at the table. Like, I'm just like, it's too much. I'm not, I'm just not going to do it. So like now my wife, um, if she's out at like a work thing and they ask what I do, she's just like, oh, Morgana's a designer. <laughs> and that's the end of the conversation. We just stop there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of my experience. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky. Like most of my friends are very supportive of just like what I'm doing because I'm doing it. You know, they like, oh, that NFT thing. Cool. Like Leah's doing another cool thing over there. Like, you know, um, Not a lot, but it's funny that you mentioned like doctors or nurses because the one person, my like best friend is a surgeon and she was always like, yeah, but like, didn't the crypto market just crash or, you know, like those are always her like cool art, but like, wasn't there a scam in the news or, you know, so, but for the most part, my friends are like, cool, tell me when you're rich. (laughs) Well, my friends are the same as you, Tony, and it, and it's a good feeling, and it's amazing to have friends like this. That even though they don't understand something, they've got your back. Um, but that's beautiful, and yeah, I, I've I've gotten some faces. I know when I came downstairs um, to my landlords actually, and I was it was just after I spent like my whole day on Manifold working out a smart contract, and I'm like, man, these NFTs, this crypto art, blah 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 blah, and they're just looking at me going, yeah. <laughs> It's tough. And Steph, you were gonna say something. It does it does blow my mind sometimes because we was we we're speaking about like educated doctors and people that are educated and they can't 
fathom the concept of like what's going on and i'm like well you you've ma- you managed to master like a very hard trade like you've fa- you managed to master the, the the human body or whatever like and you can believe what goes on in there but you can't believe that what's happening on in technology it's just um I, yeah it's it's yeah, it's it's something that's going to change over time it's because it's it's just what society's thinking um but i know that like i speak to about with majority of my friends outside of my small core group that's involved and they have no idea what's going on. Um, and as much as I educate them, it's still, they're still like, just Chris is doing his thing. Um, we don't know what he's doing, um, but he's doing something. <laughs> but yeah, no, so that's, I really, I really enjoyed hearing both, both your views. I'm going to, we've been going for like 45 minutes now and we do normally open it up to the audience. Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions to either of our guests that I uh, feel, feel free to come on up. Like we have been speaking, it's been very art based today. Um, I just wanted to have the topic about two different unique artists doing different things. Um, and or we could have had you on individually, but I thought it'd be really interesting to try something different and, and have a have a bit of a joint panel. And I think we've uh, we've got the hang of it now. Uh, we started off a little bit rocky, I think, with the the, the pauses, but I think now we're, we're going quite sweet. So we've got um we've got one request. We've got uh, I, th- I don't know if it's Caitlin or I'm assuming at this time of day it could be Caitlin from Arcadians coming up. Or maybe it's Luke working away. But um, is it Caitlin or no, Luke? No, it's me. Hiya? Good morning. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful. Hello. Hello. I, um, I actually have a question for Morgana. Welcome to the GC, girlfriend. <laughs> um, I heard you talk a lot about brand. And that's something that I'm really putting a lot of focus on at the moment for our own project. Because I do want longevity in this space. And I do... I don't want to be um, put into a certain category, I guess, and that's all, That's the only place that we sort of stay. Like, I really want to build out our brand. So, I guess, yeah, I would just ask what sort of things would you make sure that someone has got in place to build out their brand if you have any sort of tips or, yeah, I don't know if that, that's a very vague question, but, um, yeah, so I guess I'm just more interested in the brand aspect that you – the skills that you have there yeah look thank you for the question um and thank you for the warm welcome to the gc i think there's so many things and without seeing like the depth of what you've already built um it might be a bit difficult i'm just scanning um your twitter at the moment i think like process is ultimately always king for me um you have to share what you're doing in the moments where you're creating or it's being created. So if there's not enough of that being shared, you'll never build the emotional rapport you need to carry your brand into the future. Um, Just having a look. I definitely, like, I'll definitely um, flick you a DM with anything that I can see that I would say, like, to focus in on. But I think, yeah, if you can focus on process, um, that's ultimately the key to unlocking your audience's, like, buy-in to the project and, and yeah, we, we, we had awesome. the conversation Thank you. we had the conversation i think a few weeks back caitlin how i was talking about how you're you're such a good speaker and and you're a very uh lovable and easy to get to know person and, and i touched on the you being like you you've obviously showed your face in the docs like you actually promoting yourself as being that founder of that business and the branding is huge in itself because people see you, they like you and they trust you. And then that makes them want to be more interested in your project. So and I know that's something that you have started doing more on. I've seen your TikToks recently of you uh, talking about the project in yourself and it's, it's, it's awesome to see. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Trying. <laughs> um, but no, I think that's, Awesome. And, and I know for a fact, like if I could sort of rewind the clock a little bit and not that I need to, like we've, we've still we've got all the time in the world to, to, to do all of this moving forward. But yeah, it would be so cool, even just as a, as a personal reflection to look back at that documentation of where you started of the project or whatever it is that you're working on. Like, it, yeah, that like documenting it either, either for yourself is really cool as well as for your community. So um, I would, if you, if you are open to um, connecting and sending a DM, like I would love to, to hear from you. Um, but yeah, that, that's really helpful. I think anyone that's coming into the space that's new or has been in for a while, like if you're not documenting your journey, um, start, start now, start today. That's really, really great tip. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I'll definitely send you a DM. I think documentation is is definitely, we, I would like to highlight that point again. Um, it's something that I've started doing with my, I, I'm, I've created an Amazon, how to sell an Amazon course with my, my fiance and my brother-to-be. And, and basically that's something that we've started doing now on, on other platforms where it's starting to document. Like we did a podcast yesterday um, and I've just put in, I just showed that, I've showed that on my socials. So documentation, I think is something that is sometimes forgotten um, because once again, it builds trust and it shows people what you're doing. Um, and I know we're building towards our launch at the end of this month. So there'll be more and more videos of the process, what we've been going through, what we've been working on, uh, editing, all the little things, the shows. Because for some people, they think, oh, yeah, you've created a course. So you can do that overnight. Well, we've been working on this for like three to four months now, like tirelessly working, making the content and all this sort of thing. So I think sometimes you need, and as an artist as well, oh, for, you, for you ladies in this chat, if you don't show that documentation, people don't really realize how much you've worked and how much you've spent. And, and, and then the value can be lost, in my opinion, because they, they, people can't, they just think you put something together overnight where it takes time and effort. So I think that's a very good point that was brought up. Documentation for anyone trying to build a brand or become an artist or build a business, you need to have that documentation early on. Um, and also from a legal side of things, someone was speaking about it as the fact that you can, um, you can show that you are actually creating something to a degree if you've documented it from an early stage or the date when you started doing it, I, I'm not sure. Technically, I'm on the legal side, but I did. I think I might have been in your space the other day and we were speaking about it, Morgana. So I, don't, I might have just pinched that from one of your, show, one of your shows. I'm, I'm but, uh, He's in the room. It was, it was uh, one of our last um, senses. He was talking about intellectual property and how important it was to kind of cover your tracks and document and have your, like, data room and all those sorts of little tips. I'm going to pass over to uh, Stone NFT. Uh, thanks for coming up, mate. And then uh, Hesse of War Dogs has also joined as well. So, Morning, guys. How are we all? I'm good, mate. How are you? Not too bad. I just thought I'd throw it out there. Um, being that you've got artists um, and what looks to be fairly accomplished artists on the panel. Um, I'm a 3D sculptor. Uh, during the day, I create NFTs. Sometimes of my sculptures, um, but uh, generally because you know my sculpting is quite noisy. It's a daytime um, daytime pursuit, so I create a lot of NFT artwork at the nighttime. My question is um, for anyone that's looked at my Twitter or my voice account, it's pretty scattered. Um, I create like a madman. So it, it's all over the place. Like there's 3D sculptures, there's digital paintings, there's collage work, so on and so forth. Um, just throwing it to, to both the artists here on um, what sort of effect you think that has on an audience. Because um, I, I see a lot of people concentrating on one artwork and or, you know, one, one theme and, and pushing it again and again and again. And I just can't seem to do that. I can't seem to slow my process down to concentrate um as i said i'm i create like a madman every day i'm creating uh, either in the 3d world or in the in the web 3 world or both um and i'm just pushing stuff all the time uh, yeah just wondering what what uh, what you see is you know, the negative positive or otherwise on that i think you know Keep create. I'm definitely like an all over the place artist myself. Like I, any kind of craft I can pick up, I want to try it. Um, and then it's my favorite for a month and, you know, but there's nothing wrong with creating all kinds of art all the time. It's just comes down to when you're picking how to display it. Um, you know, you don't have to put every piece in the same collection. You could have one piece for your sculpting and one or one collection for your sculpting pieces. And, um, you know, you don't have to limit the kind of art, but maybe curate the way you show it um, to kind of help the the collector, the viewer, see the vision. Or yeah, maybe or... just be chaotic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think organization is key. It, it was a question that I asked a lot first coming into this space, um, you know, having two followers. I was jumping into spaces and I was like, right, guys. I need help. Like what area do I focus on? I do photography. I do this, I do that, all these different types of painting. Um, and, and the advice that I got back and what has worked is, is having strong organizational skills and, and exactly what Tiny said. But I also think like a, a, 
my little two cents on this is people will buy your stuff for you and the connection that you have built with them. So as long as you're establishing strong connections, putting yourself out there, having your community um, and that strong brand and storytelling and process as well, uh, like what Morgan has also been touching on, the rest will kind of follow through. And I know for myself in this journey of sharing all those different parts of myself, it's naturally progressed into focusing on a few elements at a time. Um, and I think, yeah, you might find that just through, you know, really reflecting, finessing and experience and time. Yeah, I would, I would just also echo all those thoughts and um, say that as well, like even um, coming up with a brand palette um, can help as an artist. I think uh, the one thing that artists, we, we sometimes forget is that we are a brand and, sometimes it's easier to develop those brand colors like even if your profile picture is a yellow square like carrying that thread through your branding through your website it just it helps to establish that um like visual touch point for who you are so um thinking about those brand colors that could be an option as well did that um that answer your question yeah, thanks very much, guys. It's it's just nice to get pointers um, from people that have obviously spent a lot more time in here than me. Uh, as I said, yeah, I'm a professional sculptor, but I'm pretty new to this whole realm the last couple of months, sort of bouncing around and trying to soak up as much info as possible. Yeah, thanks Thanks for coming up and asking the question. I know, Levitate, you had your hand up. Um, did you want to add to that conversation before we jump over to War Dogs? I did. I did, boss. First of all, hopefully everybody's doing good today. It's good to see everybody in here. Um, and honestly, like I, I was really, you know, kind of echoing what Tiny and Morgan and Madame were saying. Like, if you keep a little bit of organization, it's it's easier, like on the collector's eyes, and then like the mental capacity of to keep up with where it came from. So, like, as an artist, me, like, I I have collection based like towards my brand, and then I have all these other different things that come to my mind that I work on like simultaneously and I jump back and forth between all of it. But something that's really helped me is um, kind of separating the different mediums or different styles that I work in into different collections. And then um, one, whenever it comes to a marketing standpoint, it's going to be easier to push that certain product or that certain, um, you know, those certain pieces to your consumers or whatever. And then, it just, as I said, I feel like it keeps it easier for the collectors as well because everything seems to be in more of an organized area. But that's my two cents. <laughs> now, from a from a, an OCT point of thing, I'm all about organization. I like to know where everything is when it is. So if I come into a, a if I'm looking at an artist profile and I'm confused where the hell I've got to find something, I'll probably actually leave and that's just my honest opinion like i like to anything if i come onto a business web page or i go into a discord i, I don't want to I'm, time is money i don't want to be sitting there trying to find what i want i want it to be put in front of my face so from an artist's point of view like if you've got certain things that i like like the, in, a, in a row well, not in a row but like in order and i might i come over because i like a piece i've seen flash on social media and i want to find similar stuff i want to see all of you you've got of that certain piece um, I don't want to be looking through other stuff that maybe I'm not interested in. It might go the other way. It might, it might catch my eye on something else. But normally, if I was to come on looking for an artist's profile, I'd be looking at a certain thing. And then maybe I'll go check out something else. But I want to see everything I want to see to begin with. Maybe I'm just a bit greedy, but that's how I see it. <laughs> but I'm going to pass over to um, War Dogs, mate. Uh, thanks for coming up. And thanks for waiting so patiently. No, thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to touch on the documenting side of things. I'm no artist myself, but I do understand the importance of documenting, and especially for um, budding artists that are coming up. Um, your IP is your brand, um, and you need to protect that like you protect your body and your life. So, you know, you might not be able to afford a lawyer from the get-go, these IP lawyers are extremely expensive, but what you can do to protect yourself in the future as a budding artist or an established artist is document everything. So 
um, date, time stamp everything on a piece of paper, not on your computer, because that doesn't justify it or do it any legal standing. Um, you need a book, and then what you do is transfer that, um, I think I said this on a previous episode, mm-hmm. to a file on your computer that you call the data room, and you keep it that way. Um, Not only does this protect your IP rights, but in terms of business, later on down the line, you know, when you blow up, because you eventually will blow up, um, it puts you in good stead for funding. So funding from VCs, so funding from angel investors, from anyone that wants to fund you. You need to be able to present that data room to be able to show them that you have runs on the board You've documented everything from the get-go. Your IP is there and that you know what you're doing. Otherwise, jumping in front of those people, they will shred you and you will not get that funding. That's all I've got to say, guys. I'm I'm not au fait on the art. We pay someone to do our art. He's one of our founders. So I applaud all you um, that are artists. It's a tough game. Thanks, James. Um, it's lovely to hear you elaborate and speak on that sort of stuff. Uh, Steph, I saw you take your mic off, but you put it back on. No? No, we're good. Um, did anyone else uh, – Levitated, you came up before you had a question um, or to, to add your two cents in, in regards to Stone's question. Was there anything else you wanted to say this morning? Good morning. Hello. Or good, good night for you. Good evening for me. It's like 6 p.m., but good morning to you guys. I'm Honestly, like, I didn't really have too much else to say. Um, I was just listening in and uh, figured I would chime in on the question that he had put out just a minute ago. Other than that, not so much. I would like to – I've got a, a question. We've, we've just – we've dropped out uh, – Morgana's dropped out on the Zoom, but I see she's still in the house, so I'm assuming she's still here. But, uh, Tiny, I wanted to know um, – do you know, have you met anyone else in the industry that is doing something similar to you or someone who's doing like any other artists that we could look out for that are doing sort of physical uh, dioramas or to, is that the right word for it or yeah. something like to yeah. that degree? I, you know, I haven't seen anything else like it in Web3, um, not to like toot my own horn, but I really, I haven't seen anything even close. Um, if you know of something like send it my way. I have seen on TikTok one girl that's doing something very similar in Altoid tins. Like, she makes little scenes in the tins. Um, I kind of tried, like, hey, another miniature artist, and she just never responded. (laughs) But, um, yeah, you know, I don't – there are definitely other diorama artists, but I haven't seen any kind of in Web3. It's just, it's just like I love. I, this is what I love about Web three, and I'm, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here again because I, I really like. We obviously we always speak about like the we're early, we're at the forefront. We still are very early, but there's still not very many people in the industry. But the the amount of people that are inside this small little community already and already thinking outside of the box of the community, like obviously a lot of people are just copying and doing like knockoffs and and that sort of stuff. But there is some real big brains that are like, oh, okay, well this is a brand new industry. I want to do something even different again inside this industry. And that's what like really excites me around web three and, and, and NFTs. Like for example, we had last episode, we had a guy that's doing dynamic NFTs, which is something I hadn't heard of till a few weeks back. So it's like people continuously to like uh, learn and then, and then trial and error and then, and then grow in an already very, very like fast moving industry is what excites me so much. And I think for any artist out there, like, if you see this, you're like, wow, like, I've been doing art or I've just started doing art. And, like, it's hard to get to, to, to like, learn something new or, or, go, or like, have something new tried out to, like, an audience that's interested. But because the NFT community is still quite, like, close-knit to a degree, like, it might sound silly because it's, like, we might not think that, but it's still close. You can actually get your work seen very quickly to lots of different people because of the, the, the communication we have within this sort of smaller community we have right now. So for the innovation going on and the artists that are, that are creating new things and doing new things, like you said, you're, you don't know anyone else doing your exact sort of thing in NFTs is amazing because it's just, it's just opening up more and more opportunity um, for new people to have ideas. I think like the biggest um, 
compliment I've probably ever got in the space, which they wouldn't even know this, but um, somebody, I was talking about my project and they said, oh, I remember you. I heard you give your first chill. You said you were really nervous. And I thought, I must have done something right that my project from my first chill, where my chill was shit, you know, my project was still remembered. Um, and so that, like, that really pushed me to keep going in Web3, I think, because it's just like knowing you're, you have something that stands out, like, that's, like, that's what makes, makes it worth it. It's your beautiful heart, sweetheart. You are, you are so gorgeous, and it comes out in your voice and your passion, and, um, yeah, you're definitely, definitely memorable, memorable hearing about the way that you kind of explain everything that you do. And yeah, you, you stick in your in everyone's minds and hearts, most importantly. And that's what um, I think it was. And I, I'm glad that you kind of you stuck around it and kept going with it. And yeah, I'm, I'm I just I love all the things that you do. I, I it broke my heart that that beautiful, big, like flower thing had to get destroyed. Um but I was just wondering, because I know that we've gotten over the hour mark. Uh, Morgana, you're, you're still in the room, aren't you, darling? Um, I am. I am. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, if both of you ladies can share uh, other artists or people or projects that you're watching in this space or that people should be paying attention to. Ooh. I, I just think, like, I'm up with most of the Australian projects. Um, I really think it's important to like foster the local scene. So I'm all over that. Um, but I also love, so the artist from Not Your Bro, um, Michael, he's like super talented and he's going to go on to do like amazing things. He just did, I see you've got the um, Not Your Demons profile picture. He just did most of the art. Um, helping Natalie for Not Your Demons. And I just think he's super talented, a um, little bit shy, but he's going to go on to do such amazing things. So I'm really, like, watching him as a big fan of the project. Um, and I guess, like, I love, like, the X copy stuff. Like, I'm just a big fan of that kind of style. That's kind of where I sit. So, um, yeah, I'm, watch I'm watching a lot of what X Copy are doing and the bigger artists coming into the space. I love what Tom Sachs did with his Rocket Factory project. Um, but, yeah. I would have to say um, my two, like, biggest people, not necessarily artists in Web3 that I would kind of shout out are Lauren Turton and Caitlin Strumpel. Um, Lauren Turton right now is running this, program called the Inward Outward Expansion Experience. It's all about like internal planning, but also growing your TikTok influence. She's like great at onboarding people into Web3. She's um, has a pretty strong community going in. I, I look up to her a lot. And then Caitlin Strumpel has um, an organization called the Calibration Room that I'm also part of. It's like a women's networking group, um, but really geared toward action and branding. And um, so the two of them, I get a lot of support from as far as like keeping my Web3 journey going. And then if you want to say a Web3 artist, Lisa Kalma, who you had on a few weeks ago, I just love her. So That's, that's awesome. There's some nice names. I'm, I'm definitely uh, intrigued by it. the the copy is something that I've been following a little bit. Uh, one of my, well, my, my good friend Emma, she uh, she has been banging on about that those projects or what what they do for a while now. So that's on my radar for sure. Um, but yeah, I've just had a message. Hold on, what, Levitate, are you trying to message me while you're up here speaking? Yeah, feel free I'll, to I'll, feel, feel free to say. just feel free to I'll, just join in while before we end the space. <laughs> I, I was just gonna say you should try to get Lauren on for uh, for an onboarding space. I. Yeah, I was. I she's on my radar. I've got her with notifications on. I've been meaning to send that DM because I've been looking at her. Um, she's incredible for all the things that she's doing at the moment. Yeah, I'd love to, you know, hear her point of view and and how she is, you know, going about tackling the whole onboarding situation because it's. I mean, as we as we all know, um, you know, we're kind of like in a bubble but not the 
bubble what? sense that everybody calls the NFTs. But like we're in a bubble, you know what I mean? Like like expanding the um the base of like who's involved in Web three is super important. So I would love to hear her uh, side of side on that. No, I think it's very, very, very important. Uh, And I think everyone's trying to, well, a large number of us are trying to work out how to get more and more people into the industry Um, and also obviously beneficial for like our our own projects. So um, yeah, no, definitely someone I'd love to have on in. We'll we'll have to do a bit of of a deeper dive and see if we can, see if we can score and have them on. But um, on that note, we are, yeah, we've, we've, We've got our sort of usual time frame. We normally go with these shows. The last couple of run a, a little bit longer, which um, which is okay. But we do try to keep it within the hour. They and this one's been an interesting one. It's been different having four people up here, um, but really, really good. The conversations rolled on really nicely as we opened it up a little bit. Then a little bit more free flowing when we could have you guys speak a little bit more on the on the fly rather than ask you sort of the questions that we like to ask from the get go. But I've had an awesome time as always. I love doing these shows. I love learning more about artwork. I love learning more about artists. I love hearing your stories. And I love I love seeing the unique styles and the way you guys think and, and what, what's happening in the space because it's always awesome. And I hope anyone listening today may have been uh, that little light bulb's gone in their head. They may have thought of a new way or thought of something or heard of a name that can help them a little bit more on their journey in Web3. And that's what this show is all about. So before I, before I close it over, I'll, I'd just like to thank everyone. Madame Love. Um, is there any last words you'd like to say? No, I'm just so glad that um, this idea of, of bringing you two ladies together has worked out so beautifully. Um, also, you you ladies speaking, not you guys, <laughs> it's such a such a thing that we do um, in our speech. But no, it's it's been gorgeous um, and, and lovely. And yeah, you both have so many unique sorts of little tidbits to share. Um, thanks to everyone in the room and. Yeah, thank you. And um, uh, I'll just say goodbye. Tiny, you there still? Do you want to say one last goodbye? And, yeah, we got away from Tiny. and uh... Just thanks again for having me on. This was a lot of fun. It's always fun talking to you guys. So. It's an absolute pleasure. And Morgana, I'd like to – I know that you've left our Zoom, but I see you're still there. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, you know, designer things, my After Effects is updating and it uh, is taking all of the juice from the internet. So Zoom is not my friend right now, but um, thank you so much for the platform um, and thank you for having me on. I think it's uh, really cool what you're doing. And um, please, if anybody ever needs help um, with their stuff or they want they want that second opinion, just reach out. My DMs are always open um, and I'm happy to provide any input Cool. And that's what it's all about at the moment, the opportunity to be able to speak to people and connect with people and hopefully help each other along the way and get that head start. Like um, I said the other day, like who doesn't want to start a race with a head start? So at the moment, we've got the ability to get a head start. And if you get everyone on board and help you, you're going to be even faster than everyone else. So on that note, we're going to close it out. Uh, people that don't haven't listened in before, we do put these on YouTube. Um it's got a bit of a backlog at the moment because I had a few technical issues, but we'll probably have this one out next week. Um, and for anyone else that wants to continue on listening on to a few spaces, we've got Levitate Space coming up in about 15 minutes. And I think, if I'm not wrong, uh, my tiny castles will be co-hosting. I will not be there, unfortunately, today because I'm a little bit busy. Um, but it's another great space and the conversations are, are, are very awesome to be part of. They go all different directions, um, but it's always, a, it's always a pleasure being on their show. So... I'll leave it up to you guys, and then I'll see you in the next episode. See you later, guys. Have a good one. Take care, buddy. We miss you, by the way. (laughs) I'll be (laughs) back soon. I'll be back soon. Peace, guys. Bye.